Okay, get back on this bike here. Been here all damn day and I've got anything done yet. So I spent all day getting my stuff ready to go and I've been interrupted all day long. So I got my floor all cleared out so I can work. And I'm gonna try to get this thing wired up. Probably won't get it done tonight though. All right, so I pulled out my Harley service manual. So this one has to be for a Sportster. All your Harley service manual has a bunch of wiring schematics in the back here for different models. You know, I want to know how to wire up a starter relay, which is this. So we go in the book here. There's a starter relay. So we got to figure out where all these wires go to. So it's just a matter of tracing out where they go to. So pick a lead, follow it, boom, 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 boom. Goes right to here. And that set is for a ground. Ground on the rear brake line clamp. That's a crappy place to do a ground, but okay. So this is a negative. Okay, that's a ground. Okay, so let's see. Let's go with this one down below here. Okay, this one here goes boom, 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 doop, 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 doop. And that goes to your starter. So this here is your trigger wire. Let's see, is I call that a trigger? I want to call that a starter. I'm going to call that a starter. Starter. Okay, that's your output. Out. Goes to your starter. Okay, so the one over here goes forward. That's going to be a starter button. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Boop. Right over there, starter button. Boop. Follow the blue line. Right over there. Okay, so which one was that one? I got lost. Come down the line. Here. Here. Right there. So this one over here is start button. That's the trigger. It triggers it, gauges it. Okay, so the last one must be the hot one. Right to your circuit breaker, which is your hot. So that would be this one over here. This would be plus 12 volt. So get 12, negative, start out, start button trigger. So when you hook up the starter relay, you got 12 volts of power coming right off your battery. Unless it's on the switched circuit breaker. Now this here is probably a switched circuit breaker, so it's not full time. Switch means you have to go through the ignition switch before it turns on. If it comes right off the battery, it's full power all the time. So it's best to have this stuff come off your starter button. So when you shut the button off, when you shut off your ignition switch, none of this stuff is active. Okay, so, so you get your plus and negative on right here. This one here goes out to your starter, which makes it run. That's what triggers the starter over there. And then this here is your starter button, which turns everything on. So this is your output, that's your trigger, and these are your two hots. And you got numbers on the post right there if you read them. There you go like this, makes it better. There you go. So those have numbers on them. And if you go over here to your starter relay, there's numbers right there. So you can see the numbers. And if you look how it's made, you got two posts going side to side and then one going vertical. That's exactly what you got here. Two going side to side and a vertical. So there's how you do it. And the center post we don't use. You can use that if you want to use it for, uh, I think that's a momentary output voltage or something. I think that's what that does. I don't know. We don't use it on a Harley. All right, so that's how we wire the switch. So now that we got the book marked up, I don't usually like marking up my books, but this is such a quality book right there. It looks like someone's battery acid got a hold of it, or a dog, one or two. So anyway, all right. So now we got two options. We can either use the starter relay pigtail like that, or we can use the connector, and we just wire it up ourselves with by putting our own spade terminals in there. So that's a different way of doing it. Or just to say, screw that. And we just take spade terminals like this and just stick them right on there direct and wire it that way. 
lots of different ways of doing it. Or you can solder stuff to the holes right there and do it soldered on. I don't recommend doing that, but any and all of those will work. Okay, so what I gotta do is figure out what we're gonna do with this thing. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on here. Which way is it going? It goes like this. And we're gonna go over here and figure out how we're gonna run this. So we have a circuit breaker up there. It's a 15 amper. So that's gonna come off our ignition switch, which is gonna be right here. That's this thing here. That's going to go up to our circuit breaker. And then all the power will come off of that. And actually, I'll probably just go through this. I'll probably come off the battery, go through the circuit breaker to the ignition switch. The ignition switch will split the power up between the ignition and lights. You know, just use one breaker for everything. That's probably what I'll do. And then this here, we're going to have to wire in someplace. So I'm not sure where we're going to hang this. As I recall, before there was no place to hang it, this here is going to be stuck right through here, like that. So we got that way up there. There is nothing really here to mount to. I didn't particularly want this thing hanging down like that. That doesn't look the best, especially when this falls off. With one hand, you get so much power. Okay, so that leaves other ways of doing stuff. So probably what I'm going to wind up doing is zip tying this thing underneath the top of the frame down in here. That's probably what I'm going to do. We got our bracket over here, which is fighting me right now. Okay, because we got a brake line in there and a bunch of other junk sitting there. So this has a hole. So I could probably put a hole right here in the frame, mount this thing right there with a the screw, the pigtail comes out the back, it's all underneath the brake line so it's semi hidden out in plain view, it doesn't look too bad, and then these wires can go right up to the ignition switch where they belong to make it work, so we're going to have full time 12 volt coming off of that, off the switch, And we just divide it up. So we need a ground so we can come off of that hole right there with a the ground wire if we want. That'd be a deep good ground. Alright, and then what else do we got? We need to get... One of these wires got to go over the starter motor, which is up here. That's what this wire was doing originally goes up here like that so now that one will be this one now will come out of here go into here and then one of these will go up to there so we can take this pigtail and plug it in the back and make it work okay so that eliminates some of the wiring if I do that that way so I'm gonna go ahead and use the one with the pigtail on it I think make it a little easier on me and this here is our brake light wiring. This goes to our stoplight switch, which is buried under there now. And this up here is our headlight and ignition and unknown. I think this was the unknown one, but I don't remember because that was a while ago since I checked all this. Maybe this is the unknown one, I forget. So we're gonna have to figure out what goes to what again. So I know how to run it. So these I'll do later. I'm going to work on down here first. And the first thing we got to do is put a hole in there for this and mount it somewhere we can get to it easily. So like I said, I think that's the best place to put it is right there. I can put a hole right there to hold it. I have to come down just enough so I can get a drill motor in there. Punch it in. There's nothing on the back side. It's real thick, so it'll work. I can actually just drill and tap that quarter inch probably. I think that's a quarter inch thread. I don't want to put a bolt. Actually, I don't want to do that because that's going to be plastic and you can't really tighten plastic very well without it unscrewing. So I'm going to put a nut washer on that. So we'll use a nut washer on that. 
Okay, so let's see what a quarter inch does for me here. Quarter inch does not work, so we are not using a quarter inch. That means I gotta find a screw someplace. Where am I gonna get screwed around this place? Let's see here. There's some screws right here. Okay, I need some kind of a screw. That looks like a really nice one right there. Mm, barely long enough. Might just make it. If that doesn't make it, we're going to use something on the, something over there. Okay, so it's going to be a number 10 screw. 3 16 hole. So we're going to put a 3 16 hole into our frame to hold this on there. All right, so we need to get some tools for doing that. All right, 3 16 So we're going to need our go-to box. This. Yep, center punch in there, get all that. Here's a hammer. I'm not going to tap anymore. I'm going to drill a bit. A bunch of drill bits in there. I need a drill motor. Alright, we're not doing any tapping, so it makes it easy. Alright, should have what I need. Extension cords are right there. Grab one of those. Okay, there we go. That goes there. size all right so I'm gonna figure out what we got to do here drill a hole in a frame can we handle that without screwing it up that would be the question okay I'm gonna take this and figure out why it doesn't want to insert into the hole Start to end up because it's too hard. Do you hear that pop? That's got some serious spring tension on that. Let me tell you. Oh, I didn't write down what color wires go to what. So we'll be taking it back apart again. Okay, so I'm going to put this underneath the frame here. Figure out where we're going to put that thing. Stick it right about there. like the winner spot. No, it moved on me twice. Great. Go with the top one, not the bottom one. Sixteenth bit. That'd be right there. So we're gonna go one size up on that. Use that one. Hopefully this is long enough I can get in there. It might not be. Looks like it's gonna just make it. Sucks. Should be glad I grabbed a good one. Okay, make sure that wire's out of the way. That drill is terrible. one. It's a little shorter. I don't know if I can reach in there this one. Barely.
Ugh. My drills either all suck or I'm getting tired. I think they all suck. Yeah. Yeah, they are what they are. They suck. It's almost all the way through, though. bottomed out on anything yet. Sure there's no wires in the way under there. Okay, I'm bottomed out now. Can't do no more with that one. Go back to the old doll here. Who sharpened that? Terrible. I don't know if you can see how sharp it is not, but it's not very good. Appears to be dull. sucks. Make sure it's not too hot. It burns plastic. So if you can hold on to it, it won't burn plastic. If it burns the piss out of your fingers, it won't work. Alright, here we go. That's how you're supposed to drill holes that don't work very well. Okay. So now we got a mess on the floor. Clean up time, aisle four. Clean up. Clean up time. Don't swipe away all your screws. They're kind of important. Mr. Garbage Can because it hit the back of the table and I slid it in the garbage can. Great job. At least I dumped it on the floor. That's all that matters. Okay, so now we're going to check our screws and see if we got something here that's going to work. Just a little on the short side, but it might work. Too close. So now we figure out where our bolts are at. Screws. Let me go find ourselves a little nut. About the right size. It used to be down here somewhere. See, I like a little washer in there too. That looks like a nice one right there. I only want one though, not two. I'm keeping that gold thing going here, I think. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, where is not? Nuts. Got a lot of nuts. Yes, sir. We got nuts. Got the right nut. It looks like a coarse thread nut. There's a fine thread nut for that. Don't know. Appears we don't have any fine thread nuts. That's not very good designing. All right. This looks way too small. I'm pretty sure that's too small. Oh yeah. 
way too small. So that's the nut we want to use, but it's the wrong thread. Yes, that is a coarse thread nut. That is a fine threaded, fine screw right there. See, it doesn't fit very well. So, I might have to make that work. And you will not like how I do that. Guillermo T. Okay, so here we are missing fine thread 316 nuts. That is not a good thing to be missing. All right. So now we gotta make ourselves a fine threaded 316 nut. First, we gotta make sure we got enough length to put that on there. If we don't have enough length, we might have to go to a, a coarse thread screw of some type, which we might have in the drawer right there. So before we butcher our nut, we're gonna see if we can make this one work. That bracket is really thick on that frame. So we'll take our washer. bolt to get through like that take our nut it doesn't screw on there for some reason looks like we can be uh, almost a quarter inch thick and we're done and I think the bracket is three eighths of an inch thick so that means we will be not working on our locking part because it'll be way the hell out here so this screw is an eighth inch too short So we need a longer screw. So what are we going to find a longer screw? I don't know. Maybe a longer screw box? That ain't it. Not a one-handed applica application here. Okay, I see nothing that I like. Alright, I am going to go on a screw hunt. I will be back. 